Vellum always knew the first step to becoming a true wizard was entry into the Magic Academy. This isn't how he saw it happening. Its halls empty save for the bodies of the freshly reanimated, it is still a treasure trove of knowledge and power, a place where he can forget the cataclysm. Welcome to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, the journey of Vellum. I'm Arima, and I did want to add today that if you have any questions or interests in both the game or the series, please feel free to leave any in the comments below. Thank you. The last thing on our mind today is the apocalypse. Today is about the fact that we have finally fully cleared out this magic academy. But we can't forget that the apocalypse is still out there, just at the, cor at the, the tip of our fingertips. We don't have a way that I know of to make a saw. Yeah, we have no recipe. No recipe for saws. So we're not going to be able to make a door for down there. But there might be a possibility that we can get something done, like some sort of barricade. Maybe barricade? No. Is it in this menu, maybe? Barricade? That's a road barricade. Large wooden blockade used to block a passage through a road. Lined with reflective light to increase visibility. Does little to stop a moving car. I doubt that that's going to be good enough. And unfortunately, yeah, we can't reinforce a wooden door that isn't there. We also can't board up a door that's not there. There's no, there's no option to board up damaged doors. Yeah, you have to... Because this is only a door frame at this point. I would actually have to have a door here in order to be able to board it up. Another option is these statues here. They only provide 50% cover. This 50% cover over here means that um, something will be able to see past them, which makes sense. They're only statues, but they are impassable. I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of them as it feels really heavy. Strains himself a few times, but he does manage to move it. I'll try and push it a little bit farther. Well, that was that was a possibility here. We can haul everything out of the way of the door. And at least for the time being, well, the other nearest statue is this one. So let's try and move them as, as little distance as possible. Oh, I see what's happening. Um, I wasn't noticing the note there. It says that uh, some items were trying to haul across the ground didn't fit in the pile because there's just such a pile of corpses around here. Well, we'll go ahead and grab this statue as well. Straining himself, he does manage to slowly pull the statue. Vellum isn't exactly someone who has been known at any time for his strength. But we did manage to put the two statues in the way for the time being. Which, it won't stop anything per se from getting in here. But we'll at least have warning, right? Nothing is going to be able to just walk in here. Especially like the golems, for example. They won't be able to just walk in here without us knowing about it. So now that we have that door blocked off, we're going to double check real quick. We don't have... We do have a dinosaur back here. Is he still just a dinosaur? He's not a zombie or anything? He is still just a dinosaur. We don't think he can fit through this window. So we're going to loot this room first. Make sure that there's nothing back here that we care about. Um, Just some clothing in the bookshelf behind that guy. Some medicine. Again, don't... Oh, here. Here's something we care about. All of these blue things, I think we'll go ahead and take... We'll take the locking pliers as well, but we'll we'll gather all of these blue things because Vellum is vaguely aware of the fact that these are alchemical ingredients, magical ingredients. Um, and then we are going to we're going to pull out a hammer and we're going to actually smash this huge mana crystal. In its current form, it's not useful to us. But if we do smash it, we can hear it cracking at every single blow, and it's going to cause a lot of noise us smashing into it. Actually, we're not even damaging it with the hammer. We need something bigger. How about the crowbar? Smash into it over and over and over, and there it goes. And that's what we're looking for. So we have crystallized mana and small mana crystals, which will help us make our staff. We'll want to bring those up to the uh, top area. And I just I wanted to focus on getting everything out of this room first, just because we don't want to come back to that dinosaur. And we need to pick a room here. Probably the f the room in the center, not the farthest away. Just because, actually, possibly even just this room here. Far enough away from the streets that things aren't going, we're not going to be hearing things through the wall. 
but it's also far enough away from the entrance that they're going to have to get a little distance before they get to us. Um, and this will be where we where we bed down. So we'll go ahead and start just trying to like piling everything we ga gather here. And uh, what we're going to do for the next little bit here is we're just trying to go through this area and we're just trying to grab everything that we think is important and pile it, pile it here in this room. And once we're done, we'll go through everything again and keep a track of what we actually have. But I'm going to go and grab everything and I'll be back. Okay, so a few things happened while we were searching the entire place. First of all, we have a absolutely crazy amount of books and scrolls to go through. Several of these scrolls seem to definitely be some pretty interesting spells. Uh, we don't really know exactly what they do yet. Um, we did find just a crazy amount of resources as well. Hopefully some of that will be useful to us. But we also learned that um, apparently assigning your bow to be a hotkey of E gets rid of the ability to examine things. Which is why I was getting so button confused, um, trying to examine things, but instead examining my bow every time, because it would hotkey over to my bow and then ex examine that. So I removed that uh, hotkey for now. Need to keep in mind to make sure that we don't uh, double up hotkeys in the future. And then lastly, we found a bone saw, which if I examine, which now actually works, we have tree cutting and wood, uh, wood sawing qualities on there, which if I remember correctly, let's go to door real quick. Build door required wood sawing. It only requires empty wood frame and fabrication too, which means that as long as we have the ingredients for it, which I think we probably do, it's not showing me right now because I'm not actually near something I can build with, then we might actually be able to add some doors. I mean, we have so many doors in this academy. We can definitely add doors back onto this. We'll probably want to do it at nighttime, but it having some doors on here and then boarding up some of the doors so that we don't have just like easily accessed entrances is probably something that we're going to want to do. So we are going to probably read until we're tired. It is 4 a.m. So, you know, Vellum still has several hours before he would normally start going to bed. Actually, before any of that, we do need to check out our... Apparently, a lot of this is edible. We don't want to necessarily eat all of any of this. We are pretty low on food. And I don't think I really saw much in the way of food around here either. There is some brownies out here, which I can go ahead and eat some of for, t for now. Fortunately, with these dense urban buildings right next door, as soon as night falls, what we might do is we'll move one of these statues, put a door up, and then we'll move over to this building over here and see about getting some food. But for the time being, Oh, some of these brownies are already going bad. That's not good. So we don't even, we really don't have very much food at all right now. Something to be aware of. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to close the door here. We are going to study the next few hours, see about what spells we can learn from this place. After all of that, we are going to get some rest. And as soon as night falls, we'll get some food and start uh, actually fortifying this place so that we can... Get some actual progression done because Vellum knows that this is this apocalypse. It wasn't a one-off thing now. He's starting to see evolved zombies. And he has come to the realization that this is an arms race. So if we want to be able to survive here, we need to take all of this information, kind of glance through all these books real quick, and make sure that we become stronger all the time. We need to be able to keep up with the monsters that are rapidly evolving in this world. After reading through all of the spell books and scrolls that were here, we have come across several new spells, ones that we are going to be adding to our growing spellbook, growing grimoire. So we have first Ethereal Grasp, which Vellum hasn't tried out any of these yet, so he's not fully sure what the full capabilities of most of these are. And as soon as Nightfalls may start experimenting, Ethereal Grasp creates a mass of special hands emerge from the ground, slowing everything in range. Higher level levels allow for a larger effect. And then we have Fox's Cunning, which the scroll wasn't terribly uh, descriptive of what it does. All it says is that if I were to cast this spell, I'd become wily like a fox. Not amazing. We're going to have to just read it, cast it once, and see what happens. We also have Move Earth, 
and our essence flows around you and the earth follows again not super descriptive uh, scroll and then one that i'm actually kind of interested in spear of brambles it turns a stick to a vicious spear that drips with sticky sap we imagine that this is very similar to our druid bow where um if we have a stick at hand we can probably use druid magic in order to convert it into a usable spear for a duration and as we get better at the spell the duration is going to increase to be quite long 36,000 or 30 to 60,000 is uh is, is, is not in minutes but in days and potentially years don't really want to do the math right now and then last of which of the ones that we learned but not least is wind strike a powerful blast of wind slams into anything in front of your body and it seems like it both has a decent range and AoE. It does a little bit of damage. Actually, 29. That's actually a lot. Of, up to 73. Holy crap. That's actually a lot, a lot of damage. But it has a duration. That's interesting. I'm not 100% sure what this does. We might need to find a target to try this on. And the last thing we found is actually not a spell, but a ritual. The Rite of the Second Circle. Unfortunately, the Rite of the Second Circle is the second in a set of rituals and we don't have the first but if we were able to get this we would actually be able to grant ourselves a permanent alteration to our body that makes us more efficient in channeling mana finding the right of the first circle is going to be incredibly valuable to us but we will probably go ahead and learn the right of the second circle it just takes a very long time to read and and to memorize this right so we're not going to learn it right now unfortunately introduction to the divine was not terribly useful for us because it's mostly a biomancer spellbook and we're not going to care too much about Blinding Flash. It doesn't really do a lot for us. Same thing with Thought Shield. We don't think that the Thought Shield is going to be uh, absolutely amazing yet. There's a chance that we learn these once, at least just to add them to our growing grimoire, because we don't really lose anything other than, you know, our grimoire is starting to get to the point where we actually have to potentially start organizing it. There's enough here. But one of the things I want to try as soon as night falls is a comb combining Move Earth and harden earth and wonder if we can make barricades because if we could that would be very interesting tomorrow is going to be a long day of construction trying to fortify this place and then after that we're going to look into potentially getting some magical crafting done um and we're probably not going to live here long term but we do need to at least uh, once again explore our nearby surroundings make sure that we have an idea of what's around us and Honestly, before even crafting, I realized that we have an even bigger problem. We need food very, very quickly. Hopefully we can find some in this uh, apartment building that we were using the previous nights. Wide awake, but very hungry. We are... Oh, I was wondering why I couldn't hear anything. I still have my earplugs in. We are going to head out. And first thing in the morning here, I think even before giving ourselves some protection, we are going to go ahead and move one of these statues. We don't have to move it far. We just need to move it one space. Do hear something moving around out there. Footsteps. Okay, let go of it. And it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, a golem. We have full mana, though. We're going to start running. Get back. Let it in. And release. Magic missile after magic missile. Just bolt it down as fast as possible. If it gets too close, take a step back, and it's done. Fortunately, I think it might have been damaged slightly by walking over our nail boards here. It does seem like we'll catch our breath. There's nothing else out here for us right now. Something we may want to do as well is potentially blockade this area right here. So that we can only be assaulted from one direction. But let's go ahead and head up into some of these apartments. See if they left any food for us. We'll, of course, always take bandages and check the cupboard here. There's some broth and some pesto. Um, and, uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Some pickles, bacon, yogurt. We'll go ahead and take uh, a frying pan with us because I don't think we have any cooking implements. We did see a cauldron, some uh, oritalcum cauldrons in the academy itself, which in a pinch could be used to cook with. We'll take a gallon jug with us as well so that we can gather some jug or some water from uh, the very fancy ponds that are on the first floor of, of the academy and then use it to clean that water off. Southwest and below, we hear footsteps. There might be another golem still moving around out there. Hopefully just a, another plastic one. 
But it does seem like, at least for today, food is not going to be an issue. Ooh, a copper pot. That's actually better than what we grabbed already. So we're, we're going to go ahead and drop the frying pan because the pot does everything the frying pan does and a little bit more. We'll grab a second gallon jug because you generally need two. One to transfer into the other. There is a bunch of books here, but nothing we're terribly interested in. And uh, a cassock, some hiking boots. And with that, it looks like that's it. We did come away with quite a bit of food here. Um, enough so that we can kind of just squirrel ourselves away inside the academy for a few days. Now that we're here, we'll go ahead and let the light spring up and see about building a door here. Perfect. Look at that. That's amazing. We might even leave these statues here like this. Can we build the other door? Um, what are we missing? We are missing a wood panel and some nails. Well, we're going to get that and then uh, see about closing this up. Pretty easy to acquire all the materials around here. And then we have to light ourselves up again, which is one of the dangers of building at night is that we do um, we do kind of expose ourselves. But nothing came for us. Very good. If we get just a few more nails, we'll be able to board up this door here. We'll board up this one and not the other one. And it'll reduce the amount of uh, ways that something can come at us. So uh, we'll go ahead and get that done as well. Okay, we got that boarded up. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just boarding up one of the two doors so that um, we reduce the angles of attack. It, it's not going to stop something from busting in here. Stop zombies from busting in here. But it'll slow them down enough that we'll know that they're coming. We'll hear it. Um, if they start and try and break their way in. We do actually hear footsteps outside but now that we have this door here we can move around inside of here without without a lot of concern hopefully at this point there actually is a a, uh, a golem or two left out there because if there is then that's actually going to benefit us at this point instead of hurting us we'll go ahead and deposit all of our materials and one of the things that did actually happen while i was gathering materials is that we actually found two more scrolls a scroll of fault minting chance which allows us to repair items made of natural stone or metal, and a, a scroll of granite agus. When the going gets tough, summon yards thick walls of solid rock around themselves. So that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure what it's, what exactly that does, but we, again, we're going to have to go into kind of experimental mode here and uh, try out some of these spells for ourselves just to kind of just see what happens, as it were. But uh, yeah, Bellum's going to go ahead and eat. And uh, with this place actually reinforced pretty quickly, it didn't really take that much time. We are probably going to go ahead and eat and maybe find a safe spot outside somewhere to start experimenting with some spells. As we were studying, reading over our books, finishing off our spellcraft study, which uh, we at least got the basics enough to be able to cast them. We're not a terribly... Uh, skilled at any of the spells yet we did actually come across an insight our powers sort of showed themselves to ourselves showed themselves to us apparently just like we can create light we can also now extinguish it plunging an area into darkness if only we can figure out the temp the technique the only issue is that uh in our study vellum does realize that he hadn't planned on staying here this long and he left his black crystal behind. So eventually, we will have to gather up everything we have here and move back. But before we do that, we definitely want to try and make this minor staff of the Magi. The only thing we really need is the leather patches and a long stick. We also need a way to make mana dust. But uh, if we can find a mortar and pestle somewhere, that won't be hard. Picking up fresh and refreshed, we are in fact now going to, with plenty of night to spare, see about testing some of our powers we do hear some thumping from the northeast but it seems like it's very very far away so we can just ignore that for now and let's head out here check first we don't see anything let's go ahead and use our powers to expand our vision and we still don't see anything that's good We'll go ahead and uh, use the stride as well to uh, make sure that if anything does show up, we'll be able to move very quickly. 
And uh, yeah, so let's see about what these powers do. Let's start with move Earth. So we get to choose... Oh, it says in range. We'll damage ourselves. Interesting. Oh, well, we lost a concentration. Hold on. And again. Oh my gosh. Okay. So as we finally, as Velen finally manages to get the spell off, taking multiple attempts, um, he reaches out, puts his hand into the ground, and the, the ground literally falls away beneath him, creating a shallow pit all around him. That is very useful. I wonder if we could cast it again to make it deeper. We can. Wow. So we actually have a full pit now. And it says that we can put a plank over it. Interesting. So we can walk out over it if we put up a plank. So with two planks, we could actually make a bit of a... A two planks and this spell, we could make a bit of a, um, almost like a drawbridge situation. The only problem being that I don't think we can move Earth through concrete. But, you know what? We should probably try while we're at it. We do smash the concrete. It shatters, turning into sand. So, theoretically, if enough casts of this trying again and again fizzling the spell yep there we go so it created a pit there and then a shallow pit farther down that is kind of amazing actually that we can just shatter the ground like that albeit it did put a hefty toll on our mana and i want to see about so we cast hardened earth there on the ground it still just says it's grass, so we're not sure what that did, per se. Is there anything else that we have enough mana for? I would like to tr try out Granite Aegis to see what it does, but we don't have enough mana. And um, what about Spear of Brambles? So we need a long stick. Uh, can we, like, salmon some of these trees? Maybe pick some of these things? No doesn't look like any of these things like a dead tree hey there we go so we have sticks now is that good enough for the spell or do we need something else um where is it spear brambles so we can create it with learn how to something about the spell and we created a spear of brambles a twisted wooden spear whose branches twine together in a vicious point with sticky with sap looks like it actually has a significant amount of damage 26 pierce plus one to hit that is actually quite good. It also can be used to make reach attacks, which means that if we go to our fire menu here, we can actually attack things that are a square away. So between that and the bow on our back, we do actually have some significant weapons. Now, how expensive was that on mana? That was 344 mana. And it will destroy the stick, but it does seem like these dead trees um, would be a pretty good source of sticks. Be nice if we could find some sort of like maybe like a martial arts or something like that in order to uh, uh, get good at spears, as it were. We'll go ahead and leave the spear brambles there because it's a summoned item, so it's going to vanish in time, anyways. And I'm actually going to come back here and see about drinking a mana potion because I would like to continue experimenting. And it's not the best use of our time to drink a mana potion right now. Apparently, we, there's an American pickerel. Oh, it's a type of fish. To be honest, we didn't realize that there were any fish left. Just wait for some mana to come back. Basically, uh, meditating out here. We are actually going to stop concentrating for a moment. But we'll leave our night eyes on. We just want to make sure that uh, we're not concentrating on so many things that our focus goes down. Because as we're concentrating on our psychic powers, it, do it, is, it has been lowering our focus. We have enough mana to try it yet. Um, Granite Aegis, 744. Oh wow, it's it's a difficulty nine spell. So the difficulty is um, basically determined by a combination of our current spellcraft and the level of the spell. And with only a spellcraft four, I don't actually think that Vellum is going to be able to cast 
this granite agus right now. Apparently, the fault mending chant also has ingredients. In order to uh, repair something, we would need soil, rock, and then some sort of metal. So, copper, lead, etc. Which is why we were gathering some basic materials near the beginning of our journey, but with the lack of a crucible or some of the forge, it would be very difficult to uh, to do anything with that yet. It would be possible to make like a pile or something like that if we could make a temporary shovel. We could make a, a weak shovel, but we don't have a chisel, so we can't actually do anything with a shovel right now. The last spell I'd like to try is this wind strike. Costs 285 mana, but actually a lot. Um, but there's a chance that it's quite good because it seems like it does a lot of damage and it looks like it actually comes out in a cone as well. So if it's possible that we can find just like one or two basic zombies, we could try out this wind strike. We do see some dinosaurs. Oh, that's an Aptosaurus zombie. Is it faster than us? It's much slower than us. Okay. So what we're going to do is... How much distance do we have on the wind strike? Seven. So he is currently eight away from us. So if we go one, two, three. He still can't see us, but we can see him. We'll attempt... Oh, look at that. Yeah. It blasts out in front of us as a cone. This would actually be... We're going to go ahead and stop targeting that then because... We want to move in a little bit closer. Oh, there's quite a few zombies around here still. And then we're going to try and cast this again. Wind strike. Ignore that for now. We understand that he's close. Wind rushes out. And we hear a whooshing noise. It's not creating as much sound. Uh, despite the loud whoosh, um, I think it's not creating as much sound as a magic missile. And it did hit the Aptosaurus zombie for... Um, a grand total of 23 damage. We did also level up the spell, which uh, is already increasing the damage up, up to 38. It didn't move it around, though. We're going to try it one more time, see what happens. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's moving it at all. That's actually unfortunate. I was really hoping that it would, like, push it around. But as it stands, uh, we do have a uh, freaking dinosaur. Oh, it downed it. Look at that. That's really cool. It actually... It whipped it to its to the ground. We didn't notice at first because the creature's so freaking big. But we are going to try and finish this off now with some magic missiles. And I'm realizing now that um, so it took several minutes, several seconds for the zombie to climb to its feet. But I'm realizing now that uh, we actually were doing a decent amount of damage to it because, well, the magic missiles are just barely even hurting this thing whatsoever. We are going to back up. And uh, we don't want to leave this thing out here. So we are going to pull out our uh, recurve bow. And see about finishing this thing off. We get one shot of an arrow in. Aim up. Another. It is a very large target. So fairly hard for us to miss. Catch our breath real quick. It shouldn't be regenerating. We would notice if it was regenerating. Where is the plastic golem? He's all the way over there. We can take a moment here, though. Is the golem going to be fighting the creature? I think it is. Yeah, the golem hits the zombie. Okay, good. Which means that we can fire at the golem instead. Kind of help out the dinosaur for now. We've hurt the golem, and the zombie is in fact down. The The golem just tore it to shreds. But uh, we have already learned that... In fact, we are going to start running. We've already learned that fighting a golem or bow, ill-advised. So we're going to run back here, open our door. Close it and catch your breath. Velob doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of those golems again, not without an iron skin potion. We know that uh, 
It was mostly the Iron Skin Potion that let us win the fight so decisively last time. We don't really want to mess with it. It would be nice if we can clean up this downstairs. It is, it's very disgusting to just see so many rotting corpses of zombies down here. But we've learned quite a bit about our magic. This Move Earth spell is definitely going on our favorite spells list because that was very, very good. Being able to dig such a big hole. And uh, we're also going to go ahead and put the Spear of Brambles and uh, the Wind Strike on our list as well. Wind Strike might not beat out Mana Bolt whenever it comes to a single target. But if we were to have a horde in front of us, the Wind Strike would be absolutely invaluable for being able to damage and disable a large amount of creatures all at once. One of the other spells that we have but we don't want to try anymore, try right now is Cause Bear. Because uh, honestly, if it does work the way that it seems like it works, that's a bad idea. We are going to, uh, now that we're out of mana, we're going to uh, check around the house here real quick. Get a little bit more reading done and uh, uh, get back to some of the important study. But we do want to see about finding... What do we need? We need a long stick, specifically. And perhaps we search the nearby areas to see if we can find something that acts as, as a mortar and pestle. So that we can crush down some mana and make a staff. With another day and part of a night spent studying and reading. Not much has involved uh, has changed, but we have managed to level up Windstrike a few times because we plan on plan on using it. And Bellum is starting to realize that this location is very, very nice. Not, uh, not only is um, it where we've managed to stockpile a good deal of resources, but we also have this magic circle down here, which we don't know how common these are even are, but we can also get all the way up to the roof. And then from up here, we can see so much. We can see distant towns, another mega city of Orleans and Sunderland in a distance. We can see fields, um, a very small port town, and we can see how absolutely enormous this mega city of Brooklyn even is. And realizing this that Vellum sort of has his own archmage tower not just a wizard tower but an archmage tower he is starting to think that perhaps this might be more permanent a location to reside in and with those kinds of thoughts on his mind I believe tonight we are going to make a trip back to our other home, our previous home, in the magic shop, and see about grabbing everything we can carry from there and bringing it here and declaring this our new home. We'll probably fetch our arrows that we left in the body of that dinosaur zombie last night and uh, move on out. So. Since we've freshly woken up, actually, that's a good point. We are freshly woken up, so we should probably just go ahead and eat some of the food that we have here before heading out, because who knows what kind of situation we might get into out there. Drink a little bit of fresh water. Make sure we have a good amount of money. Sorry, a good amount of mana for emergencies. And then we are going to use our night eyes and our extended stride. Go ahead and... Oh, there's a so much destruction out here. Move on out here. And we already have a zombie on us, but we can more or less, with how fast we are now, more or less ignore those and move past them. Can we find the body of that zombie? Oh, it looks like it might have already reanimated. Yeah, Sahara Sahara's zombie. Wow, that thing reanimated really fast. Um, here we go. I press caps lock and the keybinds are case sensitive. So, I think we had headed straight down the road here. So we're going to follow the same way back that we did in. Oh man, there's a zombie predator and it can see us with its joints in odd places and angles, this humanoid creature prowls across the landscape with surprising speed. Its teeth 
and arms are sharpened into fine points and black ooze seeps out from the cuts between the muscles. It sees us and it's heading straight towards us. We are going to go ahead and back up a bit here. We'll go ahead and pull out our bow. And getting the zombie predator in our sights. We're going to go ahead and line up. It's very hurt, so we're going to wait for it to get right on top of us. Wait a little bit longer. Let's save, actually. But maybe jump a little bit. And fire. Or we'll catch our breath. And another zombie stepped over, so... We'll grab our arrow and go ahead and crush that zombie just to make sure that that zombie predator doesn't come back and kind of take a few steps away here. Doesn't seem like anything else sees us right now, so we are nothing else important at least. We are going to start making our way. Oh man, there are so many dinosaur zombies around here. This is one of the things that we feared, but the nice thing is, is that if we do manage to kill these, and we do manage to clear them out, we won't have to worry about them anymore. Inside the walls of the uh, academy, we had forgotten just how dangerous the cataclysm is. But fortunately, these, these particular dinosaurs don't seem very quickly, so we're going to go ahead and just move past them. Oh man, there are just... So many zombies out here. It would be nice to take a moment at some point and just start clearing these guys out. Just start getting rid of some of them. We don't have to worry about them evolving, turning into something that we potentially won't be able to handle in the future. So as it stands, we can handle them as we are now. I saw a Rottweiler nearby, but... Oh, I accidentally stepped right towards it. You're going to back up a bit. And, uh, how injured is it? Oh, it is absolutely full health. And, uh, yeah, our aim right now is just terrible. Just kind of steady up here. Get a nice hit off on it. Immediately pull out our knife, because I don't think we're going to get another chance. And then crush it as soon as it gets in. Very good. Did we forget our arrows back there? No, no, we, we, we took them with us. Okay, good. We'll uh, switch back to our bow as well. Make sure that we have that out. That one was getting a little close, so we just go ahead and finish it off super quick. Wasn't sure how to uh, get around everything here without taking at least one of them out. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and check on this bike real quick. Um, yeah, it's missing foot pedals and the saddle, which, uh, although we are no bike expert, we do think that having a seat on the bike is probably important. Just a bunch of normal zombies around here. We can basically just walk past them. We have a pack of zombie dogs. That's not fantastic. They seem to be moving quickly. Not necessarily towards me. What is that? Oh, there's a feral dwarf over there. And a lashing zombie. The dwarf is trying to throw stones at me, but he keeps hitting the, uh, the grate that he was near instead. But it does look like he got free. I think we're faster than him. We, we don't necessarily want to just run into something worse, though. Like a boomer and a grappler zombie up ahead. Moving this far through the city is a little bit of a nightmare. Going to have to say. It is a little bit of a nightmare. Okay, so what is this? This is just a house here. Stone walls. I think we're going to duck into the house here and hopefully that dwarf yeah exactly what I wanted to happen follows us in we'll aim up on it wait for it to get very very close come on did we do that much damage 
we cut it to bits, to be honest. We're going to back up a bit and pull out... Pulls out his bayonets and tries to go to town with it. It said that we were off balance, but we're not. We're just... It's so dodgy. It's so dodgy. It, we're dodging it, and it's dodging us. But we do manage to get a hit off on it. It gets a hit us off us as well. Just a, a brutal brawl in close melee, and finally goes down. There's our hunting arrow. Whew. Okay. Pull our bow back out in the darkness here. Take a moment. Catch our breath. That boomer is also a problem. In fact, we're going to take it out. Aim up on it. And careful aim. It does explode as soon as it dies. Which is going to bring in a lot of things from nearby. But if we move quickly, we can get out of there. And they're going to be attracted to that doorway from all around. But we're not going to be there. Oh man, this road is just congested with the dead. Is there anything scary around here? It's a grappler zombie, but it looks like it's distracted by the explosion we set off. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move through and move past. Looks like there's a regenerating zombie and a bruiser on either side of that car. We'll ignore them for now as well. Just trying, just trying to get past this stuff. We only have so much night time to burn. And all of our major supplies are back home. But it seems like we've gotten past the majority of it for now. I think I spoke too soon. There's a zombie dog there. We do have to worry about the zombie dogs because they are quicker than us. One of the few things that still is. As we still just bob and weave through this crowd. Okay. We might be home free. We're getting closer to where we have kind of already cleared out the zombies. Feral lizard folk. That's not good. The lizard folk whose eyes are bloodshot and they walk amongst the dead as though one of them. Tongue rapidly flickers in and out of their mouth like a snake. Hopefully, that's a one off. Bellum knows that lizard folk camps do exist, and if there was a whole bunch of them, they are very handy with spears. That's actually still a wand of uh, minor magic missile in there. I need to. Uh... Make sure we grab that at some point. We also have Lucio Abrams up here as well. So we're going to take a look at um, what we have here and uh, see about figuring out what we need to take with us and what we can leave behind. And uh, I'll be back whenever we get our bags full. Okay. There's a lot of sacrifices, but we did finally figure out what all we're taking with us. And... Uh, Bellum went ahead and, as loath as he is to leave behind physical books, he always knows where these books are and can come back and get them if he ever finds a way of getting them in the future. But we did store all the books that we had in the e-ink tablet PC that we have on us. We can theoretically find some batteries for this thing if we want to use it in the future. We left behind mostly just some minor tools. Sad to leave behind the mess kit specifically, but it just... It was one of the last things that we had to uh, abandon here. And uh, we're going to eat some of the food that we're going to be leaving behind off the floor here. And then see about getting out of here. Make sure we drop any hands that we just generated. Hopefully, as we reactivate our abilities to see in the dark and to have a longer stride. Hopefully the trip back won't be as stressful. And this will be the last trip we have to make in the, for the time being. It might not be the wisest to live in this tower so close to the river and so close to the zombies of dinosaurs that are reanimating themselves, but the fantasy of living not only in a magic tower, but an even taller building, an imagine academy, is too compelling for someone who is as washed up in the fantasy of being a mage as the reality of being mage as Vellum is. So 
we're going to go ahead and take a moment to catch our breath because we had to run away from a guy there for a moment and uh, move around this side again keeping an eye out for any of the more dangerous types of zombies the basic ones were fast enough now that we can basically just walk right past them but we do see that there is this is the one choke point we have we have a uh grappler on one side and then a zombie dog on the other we're gonna go right down the center here and nothing even saw us we are already halfway through I'll go ahead and make sure that uh, we just avoid things whenever we can. No need to even get close to most of these creatures. You say that, and then immediately one of them got close to us. Okay, where's that zombie dog? All the way up there. So what we want to do is we want to run to the southwest here, away from it. And then get far enough away that we can again just catch our breath. Always make sure that our stamina is full at any given time. Okay. I think the last thing we're going to have to worry about is the zombie dinosaurs. Okay. This bus. What even is that? It is a bus. This bus is a little bit too close to that building. So we're going to come to the north here where we have more room to navigate. And uh, th that boneless zombie just saw us, but we're going to take a few steps farther away from it and easily get away. Those zombies aren't fighting that dinosaur, so we know that that's a reanimated one, even in the dark. And we do have a Z9. The, even the zombie do dog is slower than us. That's interesting. What the hell happened up here? Something ripped this car to shred some sort of electrical sedan that just got annihilated. Perhaps a zombie or no, not even a zombie could do that much damage to a car. Just look at it. It's just torn to pieces. It looks like perhaps, yeah, it looks like there's a the, the, the corpse of a of a zombie dinosaur in there. So perhaps a zombie dinosaur was trying to get to something inside. Like maybe trying to eat some of the food that got left in the car before they got zombified. It's hard to say exactly what could have happened there. Okay. We're back. And it... What is that? Uh, a... A Domtosaurus. Huge, scaly dinosaur of broad, toothless beak, dead but walking, eyes vacant and swollen. Well, let's... Is it faster than us, actually? That's a good question. A Domtosaurus. Much slower than us. There's very little that is faster than us at this point. Mostly benefit uh, benefited to us by the, the psychic powers that we have on top of our our elven speed. But we did manage to ca catch two strike. We just hear a sound from inside. I can't be right. We'll have to check our doors. But we did catch two stragglers right before we got in. So. I don't want to leave them this close to our building. We're going to take aim, take a breath, take them out. He breathes in, breathes out. Two zombies die. It does prove that one of these nights we can probably go through here and actually get rid of quite a few of these guys. I'm actually very surprised that our traps here haven't had much work yet. Perhaps we were just hearing an echo, because this door is closed too, and uh, yeah, none of the walls have been beaten down. Check this wall back here. And none of the walls have been beaten down, so we must have just been hearing an echo of footsteps. Got me nervous for a bit there, though. That's for damn sure. Go ahead and unload everything. See about getting things kind of organized again. And uh, we'll see what we what we can figure out what is our we'll see what if we can figure out what our next steps are from here. The last thing Bellum is going to have to do is find out a way to make a new fire. So we need to find something metal. So because we want to make a brazier, which we need one piece of sheet metal to do. So we'll go ahead and light ourselves up and start kind of deconstructing 
random things nearby. Um, excuse me, menu, please. Let's just say construct. Looks like we can't do construct with that. Are any of these metal? Dishwasher? That might be metal. We did actually find some metal display shelves in here. And there we go. One piece of sheet metal. All we need. We don't have to worry about turning our light off, actually, because um, nothing can really see us around here. Uh, it might be safe to do anyways, just because these over here are actually giant bay windows and something might spot us walking up and down the stairs. It wouldn't be a bad idea for us to live on, on downstairs just so that we don't walk past those there, those windows. Because if something sees us moving in here or hears us moving in here, they might get attracted to it. But uh, go ahead and make a brazier and set it up. And now, well, we basically have everything we need to stay here for a pretty long time. There's a certain bit of fantasy that Bellum has as we climb back up the tower again of living in a mage tower, seeing the world around us clearly and easily. It might not be the safest place to live, but if we did fortify it, if we created as many fortifications as we can, maybe even like a extra layer of outer walls, we could potentially in the future maybe even learn some teleportation magic, and then we could have a place like this be a place where we could return to at the end of all of our journeys. However, with that, we are going to call it a quit today. This has been Cataclysm, and I have been Arima. If you have any questions about the series or about the game in general, please feel free to leave those questions and comments in the comments below. This series has already started to do much better than the first few episodes, and I'm no longer as concerned that it will be ending anytime soon. But still, please let me know in the form of likes, comments, and subscriptions if you're willing to, whether you are enjoying the series and if you enjoyed the show. I hope you have a good night. Goodbye.